Hey, and those sessions, 10 minute sessions are going so fast. They're boom, boom, boom. The next session is by Grant, uh, who is the VP performance marketing at homes.com. Grant, excited to hear what you have to share. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, now I have 10 minutes and boom, 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 indeed, Natalie. So I'm going to go if that's okay. Absolutely. Take it away. All right. So the uh, session today is on Entity Home. A quick guide to choosing or building your entity home for search engine visibility and knowledge panel results. So we're going to assume that everyone knows what a search engine is, and we're going to assume most people know what knowledge panels are. That's what appears within a search result when Google recognizes a specific entity. So let's dive into that a little bit. We're going to tell you about what an entity home is today. So let's start off with a little bit about me. I'm Grant Simmons, as Natalie said, VP of Performance Marketing at homes.com. We are part of the Home CoStar group of companies. And I'm English, in case you're wondering, been living in the States for 28 years. So entity home. When I go through this about uh, the best way of doing it in 10 minutes, it's just scratching the surface, but we're going to go as deep as we can and have some Q&A after if we have time. So are you a business or an entity? Either way, uh, an entity is something that exists that is unique. It is, by definition, something that is uniquely identifiable, something that is catalogued and understood. So it's collected within a catalog like an encyclopedia or a dictionary that defines words. Entities exist and are unique and catalogued. So Google is dumb, essentially. They're not sure exactly what an entity is unless the entity has some disambiguation to it. So it needs context, it needs references, needs a means of discovery, an external opinion and trust so it can provide the correct and best answers when users are searching. Even then, <laughs> there may be a challenge where you are not you, whether you're a business or a, business or a, a person. Google has to really understand who you are. It doesn't always understand correctly. So let's look at me. Um, if you look here, you type in Grant Simmons and this is not me because I share my name with an American animator as well as a footballer and some other stuff. The good news is I have enough references about me, but this is me, this is me, and that first picture is also me without the scruff. So Google does understand that me, I am unique, and yet I don't get a knowledge panel because either I'm not unique enough, I'm not famous enough, or there isn't enough references or trust signals to say who I am, what I am definitively. So how can we help them understand that? Well, we help by understanding why this guy, this Grant Simmons, the animator. So remember, it's got to be something that's uh, uniquely identified, something that's relatively well known and, and won't be anything else, and it has to be in a catalog or some kind of index. So Grant Simmons, the uh, animator, is actually within a wonderful wiki or a catalog for the Disney fandom or fandom. Now, there are many different catalogs where you can appear. Uh, fandom is just one of them, and it's kind of unique for uh, fans, like Star Trek has it, Star Wars has it, and obviously Disney. Wikipedia, everyone knows Wikipedia. It's also a catalog of entities. IMDB, the Internet Movie Database, also a trusted source. Our CMA World Book. Wikidata, these are sources that Google need, use for the knowledge graph and for the knowledge panels. And you can see uh, a little quote there, a little factoid there from Google themselves. They look at a variety of sources to bring up the knowledge panel or to bring up various snippets of data. So you can't really control that. You know, you can't really control a wiki entry. You can't really control IMDb exactly. Certainly you can edit it but it doesn't mean that it's going to stick. And often I've tried to update uh, Wikipedia data and I'm fairly trusted and sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. So we've talked about an entity home. Certainly Wikidata fandom, IMDB, CIO Workbook, these are all trusted resources where you can appear to get your entity into the knowledge graph to get a knowledge panel. But the challenge is there, once again, you can't edit it. So what do we do? This is where Entity Home comes in. And a big hats off to Jason Bernard, who came up with that uh, definition. 
Now, when I was looking at researching what to present today, I put something out on Twitter and uh, a, a good mate of mine, John Muller, John Muller from Google, uh, he calls this entity home reconciliation. What does that actually mean? Reconciliation is the way Google understands an entity's uniqueness, the way it understands uh, something deserves to be an entity. It does it by taking all the different sources on the internet and using them to disambiguate a, a people, place, or thing and call it an entity. And there's a link here, and I think this will be shared afterwards, that is uh, uh, somewhere where John Muller talks about this reconciliation and how to get something unique, how to get something recognized as an entity. So how can we do that? We can do that by giving Google an entity home, something that is unique, something that is we control, that gives it a target of where to go to look for some information about a particular topic, in this case, me, an entity. So ideally, it's the about page of an entity's official site. And less ideally, it's the home page of an entity's site. So if you have a business and you have an about page, that's where you want to focus and target uh, everything to, to say to Google, this is about the unique identity of that business. And if it's me, it's going to exist on my homepage, my uh, uh, webpage, grantsimmons.com. And I have a unique page that's an about me page that is uniquely me. It's not just Grant Simmons Animator, it's Grant Simmons SEO. That's uniquely me. That's an attribute that is me. And then I put a lot of information that is unique about me. Um, this page, if you want to visit it, grantsimmons.com and go to the about page, has also all the references that reference me. So where I've authored, like Search Engine Journal, where I've appeared on stage, like LRTCon. Um, I will add this in uh, this presentation afterwards because it has to be uh, links from or to trusted resources that say this is a trusted entity home. So that's great to have it. Once you have that entity home, so once you have this about page unique to the entity, then you broadcast that this is this home is your home. So link to it, reference it, broadcast it. So on my LinkedIn profile, I reference grantsimmons.com about page. On other pages, when I author an article, I link back to my about page. So what I'm saying is once I have this, I want to broadcast it. I want to link to it. I want to reference it any time that I mentioned within a particular a paragraph, article, or anything like that. I want to link it back to my about page. Now, because I work for a company, sometimes I have to have a link back to the company. But if I can, I also ask the, ask the publication to link back to my about page and then broadcast it. You have to get it out there. What do you broadcast? You broadcast your name person and company, so you, unique attributes of, of who you are and why you're you. What you are, so Grant Simmons SEO, Grant Simmons Marketing, that's unique to me, not Grant Simmons Animator, not Grant Simmons Football Player, not Grant Simmons Basketball Player, all folks that exist, um, but me, I'm Grant Simmons SEO. And the who, what, why, where, and how of me. So what makes me good? What makes me special? What kind of questions are people asking about me? How do I answer them? Align with all the mentions and bios, align with my social media profile, align with my author and business profile, interviews, presentations, same message, same language, and all possible but not quick. I use a few tools. I use TextRaiser to discover entities, and I use Calico Pro for knowledge panel to get entries and get these broadcasts. Big hat tip to Jason Bernard. Uh, quick recap and final recap, Natalie. Um, who you are, entity definition, what makes you you? Are you different, special, and unique? Can you effectively and simply write it? Can you put it somewhere you own? And then choose and build your entity home. Google needs that information to disambiguate. Give them consistent information. Repeat it across the web. House in the central location you own. Link to from known, trusted resources. Thank you. Ten minutes done. That is the end of the beginning. Please don't take this as the last word. Take as the first word to help you understand to get your name out and get a knowledge panel. Done. I, lo I love it. Love it. Uh, very <laughs> hands on. Do, 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 do. Very yeah. hands on. Very step by step. I see that people also appreciate people in the audience appreciate that as well. 
Thank you so much. I checked out those uh, resources. I'm going to uh, take a note of them as well. Everyone, we have one last session left. I see that the one, uh, the last speaker is actually in the audience. So we're going to go to the next uh, session, all of us together. And then after that session, we're going to have a networking session where all of us can join, uh, show our faces, show our video, and then just say hi and introduce ourselves and get to know each other uh, for about 10, 15, 20 minutes. If you are up for that, I would love to do that. Uh, Grant Simons, thank you so much for all the knowledge and hands on experience. Uh, definitely something uh, to take a note of. And everyone else, we'll see you in the next session.